All right, here we go. You better go meet your sister for the first time. You gotta meet your sister, Miss Mom. everybody else's is or was um, given this COVID-19 situation but yes as you can tell by my introduction we had Mary Simone and also she's right here as a guest on my show no she's right here um yeah I can't wait to tell you all about it let's get started she was born Mary Simone was born May 1st 2020 and she wore seven pounds and three ounces <laughs> Miss Mary Simone has quite the labor story. Um, before we get started, I want to address giving birth during a pandemic. I know there are a lot of first-time moms who are wondering if what they're going through is okay. And I want to let you know that it's not. Video conference appointments and telephone appointments, they are not normal and they are not okay. I know you feel a little bit neglected because you don't get that one-on-one -on -one type of feel with your doctor. And it's so important because we're carrying a body inside of our bodies. And I don't understand why they haven't like made some set up a system where pregnant women can still be seen the proper way. But anyway, I just wanted to get that out there, like wearing masks in appointments and or during birth. I didn't have to do I didn't have to do that, but I know other women did. All of that is not normal and um being evaded, like uh, ignored by your doctors or waiting for a phone call, all of that is not normal. And this is the time when we have to This is, you never know what being a mom is like until you give birth, but given the pandemic, you have to become that mom immediately, and that means speaking up for your child, as, well, you, if you're a first-time mom, you don't know how much work is entails of being a parent, but during this pandemic, you have to speak up for your child immediately. That means calling your healthcare provider and making sure that they see you whenever you need to be seen. And don't think that you have too many questions to ask or you're, or you're hassling them at all. No question is a dumb question and you can't ask enough of them. This is your body and this is your baby and you hired them to make sure that you are well. <laughs> My husband is, is next to me rolling his eyes, but he doesn't know because he's not a mom either. Feeding, so don't be alarmed. 
I just wanted to tell you all that because no, what's going on during this pandemic and with pregnant women is not normal, but you are strong, especially if you're handling it and handling it with grace. Okay, now let's get started on Mary Simone's birth story. Um, it all started at 37 weeks. We went to, to at, at 37 weeks, if you don't know, um, you have you begin to have um, ultrasounds every week to make sure the baby is okay. So on my 37th week, during my ultrasound, we found out that Mary Simone was not head down. She was in the transverse position, which is sideways, kind of in a hammock position. And the nurse let me know immediately, or the doctor let me know immediately that that is not okay. And that if I were to go into labor, the umbilical cord could come out before the baby and that would be catastrophic on all levels so she told me that they they like to put mothers on the c-section list just in case and that if she had flipped um down before the date then we would be glad to take my name off the list and i said okay at my 38th week appointment mary simone was head down and i was so excited because i did not want a c-section and and my and and so they took and after they found out that she was head down, they took my name off the C-section list. Well, hooray, right? Well, at my 39th appointment, which was on April 29th, my ultrasound showed my ultrasound showed that she was back transverse in the hammock position, and they happily put my name back on the C-section list for the next day. That's right. April 30th was supposed to be my C-section day. Well, we are at 10 a.m. to be exact. April 30th at 10 at 10 a.m. was supposed to be my C-section day. Well, my husband and I, we went home, we got packed, we put everything in the car, and then we headed to the hospital. I am in Georgia, and I had Mary Simone at Emory Midtown. So we got there, and they prepped me and triaged to get me ready for a C-section. My doctor comes in, and here's another pandemic question they wanted to know did I want to have the COVID-19 test I denied it three times and she was upset with me every time I think she got madder every time I said no I know there might be some moms who gave into it or believe that they should have taken it or I should have taken it but I declined it because I've been quarantining I have a two-year-old I did not take this lightly um, I know a few people who have passed away from it so I've been taking all of the precautions and I did not want my delivery to be surrounded around COVID-19. I knew that I was not sick at all and I know I'm not because nothing happened. Um, I know the doctor expressed that there were a lot of women who are um, asymptomatic and you know all of that is fine and dandy but I decided not to take the COVID-19 test. I declined it and there was nothing she could do about it because there are no documents to show that it was mandatory. But uh, when once that all was over with, um, they gave me an ultrasound and Mary, and Mary Simone was back head down. So they're like, okay, well, great. You don't have to get a C-section. We'll just send you to a room and start inducing your labor to make sure that we get her while um, she's head down. That sounded great, but now that I know what happened, I wish I would have just waited, went home, and let her come naturally. I believe that babies know what they're doing, and I should have just went with my body. She was not ready. When I got there, she was not diet. I was not dilated. My um, cervix was not short. It was still high. It was no sign of birth. I was 39 weeks um, I would, I, I just, I just wish that's one thing I wish I wouldn't have done with this birth. I wouldn't, I shouldn't have let them scare me into getting and in, getting induced. But if you're not, if you haven't had a um, baby before, there's always going to be something that you wish you would have done or said differently. And this happens to be something that I wish I would have done and said to the doctors differently. All right, so um, we get to the room at around 3 o'clock, and they induce me. They give me my first inducing medication at 5 o'clock. It kicks in around 9 o'clock, and that's when I start to have contractions. At 10 o'clock, maybe 12, 10 to 11-ish, my water broke, but it was not normal. With, with Ruby Lee, my water broke very smoothly. It broke in three gushes. 
very light. It was not traumatic. I didn't even really feel anything. But with Mary Simone, her water broke, my water broke with one big gush and it was everywhere. It was painful when it happened and I screamed. Byron was sleeping next to me and when he heard me, he got up and he um, called the nurse in and when she got in, she noticed that the baby's heart had stopped beating. That is so scary. That is a nightmare. And when she noticed that, she immediately called, pressed the button for more help to come. She immediately called for more help to come. And let me tell you, it was like a scene off of ER or Grey's Anatomy. Nurses, midwives, doctors, they fled into the room like I've never seen before. And they were calling out codes and being so transparent. I mean, it was such a surreal experience because I was pregnant and many other people just think, oh, I'm going to have a baby and I'm going to, um, I want this baby now. You see all this cute little stuff. Having a baby is very, very serious. It's a serious thing. It's an old wives tale that says that the um, death angel walks around your bed 99 times while you're in labor. I believe it. It's so, so real. This is it, giving birth is a very, could be a very, was a very traumatic experience for me with Mary Simone. And, um, but anyway, they were able to stabilize her, get her heart rate up and stabilize it and bring my blood pressure down. They put me on air and gas that time. And I had it on the entire time I was in labor from then on. And so after they got her, got her stabilized, I decided to go ahead and get an epidural because my contractions had definitely kicked in. So at around 12 a.m., I had gotten to six centimeters, no, about four centimeters dilated. And around four o'clock, I was six centimeters dilated. Um, 5 a.m., she walks in and she's like, okay, I think that um, the doctor said, decided that it would be best for you to have a C-section. So I just said, okay, I didn't want any, I already knew that the baby, baby was already under distress and I didn't want anything catastrophic to happen. So as soon as she said that, I said, okay, anesthesiologist came in, did their thing. She told that, Byron, put your, um, put this on. Byron's like, all right. I'm like, Ooh. it was a nightmare and it was all happening in the blink of an eye. Um, he followed us to OR. We got to OR. And he waited out the door while they um, put the curtain up and got everything ready. They let him in um, once the curtain was up. And as soon as he got in there, one of the nurses started counting all the utensils needed for the cesarean. And it was all just so surreal. And because this was now an emergency C-section that I had not planned. But then again, you cannot decide what's happening during labor. The baby's going to come when it's going to come and you're going to have to do whatever your body tells you to do. And so within five minutes after the surgery started, the baby was out and there was Mary Simone. And also it was such a traumatic experience. I am so glad. I am so happy she's here, happy and healthy. And compared to Ruby Lee, we are blessed. Ruby was a crier. Mary Simone only cries when she is hungry or needs her diaper changed. Other than that, Mary has been a godsend to this family. And we are so happy to have her as a daughter and have her as a sister for Ruby Lee. So that's Mary Simone's labor and delivery story. It is definitely one for the books. All right. So thanks for watching and we will be, I will be back soon. Bye.